In this video, I'm going to go over the irregular verb sum, the verb to be, um, and show you how it's formed in each tense and translated. So sum, you'll notice right away when you see the principal parts, sum esse fui. This does not belong to any declension. It's an irregular verb, um, which means that some of its forms are going to just need to be memorized. So there's not there are patterns, but there's not a rule that you can follow like for uh, normal verbs. So these are the three tenses that you just need to memorize. Um, and you, you can see kind of a pattern here with ERA and ERI. Um, but memorizing these forms is going to be the best way to approach this. So the present, we have sum es est, sumus estis sunt. And that translates to I am, you are, he or she is, we are, y'all are, they are. Okay. One thing that's important to remember is to include the actual verb to be. Am, is, are. Okay. Sum doesn't just mean I. Okay. It means I am. And you can uh, test your translation by trying to put an adjective after it. I am happy. Um, the imperfect, okay, the forms, which again just need to be memorized, are eram, eros, erat, eramus, eratis, erant. And you can see that it's not completely irregular. We still have our usual mst, mustis, nt to show as, as personal endings. Um, but there's no ba, um, and this era didn't come from anywhere up here. You know, it's not essay bomb, it's eram. And the translation of this, I know we often do the imperfect as was or were verbing, like ambulabam, I was walking. Um, but with the verb to be, that's kind of awkward. It's, it's weird to say I was being. Um, instead, you can just use what we would normally call, what we would consider the perfect, the simple past. I was, you were, she was, we were, y'all were, they were. Okay. And then the future... Again, irregular, but there's a pattern there. Um, you have ERI in a lot of the forms, but and you also notice O, S, T, moose, T's, and T. Okay, so that can at least tell you who's doing it. And then it needs to include the future marker. It, when you're translating it, it needs to include the future marker in English, will. But also don't forget to put the verb to be. Ero doesn't mean I will, it means I will be. Again, put an adjective after it. I will happy doesn't make sense, but I will be happy makes sense. So I will be, you will be, she will be, we will be, y'all will be, they will be. So these are the first three tenses of sum. Okay, Again, irregular and need to be memorized. Now let's look at the perfect system. The perfect system, if you remember from earlier in the year, is nice because it is never irregular. Even with irregular verbs, it still follows the rules. So if we, if you forget how to form these, but you remember how to make the perfect, pluperfect, and future perfect tense, you can still make them because they're all built off of the third principal part minus the I plus whatever you need. So here we have third principal part minus the I plus our perfect endings, e, easti, eat, emus, eastis, erunt. So you get fui, fuisti, fuit, fuimus, fuistis, fuerunt. And the translation of this, like I mentioned earlier, it's identical to the imperfect translation. So if we were ever going to go from English to Latin, I would say, how do you say I was in the perfect? I would specify. Um, but it's worth noting that in Latin, you will much more often see eram instead of fui to say I was. You would use the perfect of the verb to be to really emphasize that that is not the case anymore. So if I said eram litus, that's just me talking about how I was happy. But if I said fui litus, that's me really emphasizing I was happy, but now I'm not anymore because that action has ended in the perfect. So you you almost, we will almost never see these actually um, in readings. You'll see the imperfect a lot more, but it's worth knowing how they're made. Same thing with the pluperfect. Second principal part minus the I plus E-R-A. 
plus your endings. M, S, T, mus, tis, nt. So you get fueram, fueras, fuerat, fueramus, fuerat, fueratis, fuerant. And again, you need that keyword had to show the pluperfect. And you also need the verb to be. Okay, you can't just say fueram doesn't mean I had. You have to have the verb to be in it. And here it, it takes the form of been. So fueram, I had been, you had been, she had been, we had been, y'all had been, they had been. And now let's look at the future perfect. Future perfect, same thing. Second principal part, minus the I, plus E-R-I. And then plus your endings. Here we added the O, and it made that I disappear. S, T, mus, tis, N, T. And we get fuero, fueris, fuerit, fuerimus, fueritis, fuerint. And again, you need that key will have, like we have in every future perfect. Okay. And you also need the verb to be. Okay. You don't just say, I will have, it's I will have been, you will have been, she will have been, we will have been, y'all will have been, they will have been. Again, this is a form that you're not really going to see a lot in our readings um, just because the future perfect isn't used a lot but it's worth knowing it so that you know all the forms of the verb to be so to to uh, summarize present imperfect and future are irregular and need to be memorized but perfect pluperfect and future perfect follow the same rules that every other verb does